Hello friends. So the government has recently released the national infrastructure pipeline of which the interim report was previously uh, in December 2019 was released, but now it is in complete detail. And we can see uh, that the plan of investment for the next five years up to FY26 is uh, somewhere around 111 trillion rupees, which corresponds to more than $1.5 trillion. And this investment is in the infrastructural projects across India and that will be financed majorly by center and state governments with private player contributing as and where possible opportunities will be laid down for the private player. They will be incentivized to make investments through the PPP framework or other value capture financing or other means. Now, if we see the allocation of uh, projects or the allocation of 111 trillion rupees, which is to be uh, across the sectors, infrastructural sectors, we see power gets a good buy, then uh, road gets a good buy near about 20%, then uh, urban sector gets a good buy of near about 17%. Compared to the previous uh, five years, if we see what kind of investments happened in the infrastructural domain from the period of FY13 to 19, it was of the total 57 trillion rupees, near about 15% uh, was invested in the urban infrastructure movement and uh, near about 20% and similar percentages were for other sectors. Now, uh, in this current framework, we understand that this investment happening uh, most importantly in the urban infrastructure segment that will help create the, uh, the objective of creating smart cities across the nation. Uh, for instance, we see that how technology is the center of creating a smart city solution with good facilities of urban mobility, mass rapid transport uh, transit system, then bus rapid transit system, then walkways, sideways. So the urban mobility from point to point be ensured under these smart cities of the order of what we see in Western countries uh, like London and New York. That is something being eyed by the Indian smart cities here. Uh, which we are trying to create 100 odd smart cities near about. Uh, and a lot is to be, uh, a lot of results will be yielded by 2022 when we see a lot of investments uh, yielding results. Now, uh, when we are talking about urban infrastructure, then uh, sewage, sewage management is very important. That is the river front creation, rejuvenation of river bodies and to leverage those uh, so uh, a lot of things can happen to improve a city and improve the living conditions and proper national and international guidelines are being leveraged to create a national framework to understand the benchmark required to achieve a good development, the parameters to show that Indian smart cities are doing good. Now in that context, when we see a question of financing happens and uh, there we have to create innovative ways of financing these projects, these infrastructural projects, and even beyond to create more and more smart cities. So one is municipal bonds. Now, uh, Pune has shown a great result of leveraging money from yielding 10-year municipal bonds. Other cities are also... Uh, looking for these and I think more than 55 cities have received investment grade ratings for investing in their municipal bonds. So, so that is a good way of financing and based on tax revenues and user charges and other value capture financing, it is uh, bringing private players in place to capture the value which is created along the MRTS uh, system or in the vicinity of the developmental plans of housing uh, sector within the smart cities. A lot of value can be captured and overall a lot of money can be orchestrated to improve the living conditions of the people. 
So uh, a lot is to be seen of how things will unfold, but cities like Bhubaneswar and all have yielded good results. As of now, they have topped in a few rankings as well in Indian smart cities. And it is expected that other cities are also to follow suit. And all of these uh, are actively happening in the Indian context. And we it is a great opportunity for other cities to learn from the best practices. And each and every city can share their experience, their case studies. For instance, there's a case study of indoor, how they have managed the waste management. So a lot can be learned and picked up and induced in different uh, cities. And keeping that in mind, the government has created uh, a big amount of money uh, for smart city projects, which will be orchestrated by H SPVs in each of these cities. And apart from that, there are other uh, missions as well. Amrut is there then other uh, Swachh Bharat mission is there. So all of these are to create a multiplier effect in improving the life of people living in these urban areas. And we understand that more and pe more people are concentrating in urban areas as these are the growth engines of India. And people are migrating from their disguised employment in the agri sector to one or the other productive activities within the urban sector. And we are seeing the population uh, is increasing from 33% of the total population in urban centers. It is expected to further increase and reach up to 50% in the coming decade. So, uh, so these plannings are really very important and uh, we can be, uh, we can learn a lot from the Western countries as well on the walkways and other things and a lot of improvement opportunities lies with us. So hopefully these forms of investment, these NIP plans, these lie very effective for development of India. Thank you.